Oh boy, you guys, do I have a story for you guys today that I think plenty of you guys in this business will appreciate. So it's been really busy for me to say the least. It's been crazy busy with displays or why not. So, but I have such a good story that I just couldn't wait to make a whole like video about it. But I wanted to jump on because I think as always that you guys can learn from my experiences or why not. So, um, so let me start from the beginning. I got into talks with this um, customer about a setup and it was really a 50th birthday for, yeah, 50 for her dad. And we started talking back and forth about the arrangement or why not. Turns out the actual event, it was like about 42 minutes from where I am. So this is a long way, okay? And the type of arrangement that she wanted um, was going to be a uh, my circle frame, which means that I have to not only use it as a rental, but then I have to pick it up. And um, normally that could happen within my town. Like if I have a setup that's like near me, I have no issues. But being that it was my first big business where I had to go outside of where I live, like 42 minutes away, even 30 minutes is still okay. But like when we're going into like 45, 50 minutes is a lot, okay? It's a long day. I pretty much, it doesn't make sense for me to come back and return back because gas is costly right now. Um, I can't just keep coming back and forth, wasting gas, wasting mileage, time. So I decided to just hang around the area and wait it out until it was done so I can pick it up. So the event actually started at 6.30 and it wasn't gonna be done until like 11.30. So it's a long time. And you guys know I'm a small business. I have my own kids, my family had to help me take care of them throughout that period of time or whatnot. So when I, you know, talked about price and we did a contract and she decided to finally hire me, you know, book the job, um, you know, it was, I was charging my prices that I normally charge, including the delivery. Let me just put this phone over here, you guys, because this, my arm is like getting tired. So anyway, so I, I don't ever go and say, maybe here, <laughs> I don't ever go and say, Oh, if you have money, I'm going to charge you more. I My prices are my prices. I go based on design, mileage, uh, delivery, install. That's how I base my prices on. So my prices for that type of job and location, what's decent, okay? Um, I'm not going to share it, so don't ask. But it was a good chunk of money for the amount of um, time that I was going to spend doing this business now mind you could i have charged a lot more absolutely so just on time alone you know i lost on time but anyway so i did this um i booked it she paid me everything was good in the world i got my uh materials my design everything was good to go so the arrangement i'm gonna put it out here it was a beautiful round arch with gold black and uh, marbled gold balloons sorry marble black balloons so i decided to do that and um and get my materials get my day booked everything was well fast forward a few months after i'm talking like maybe three months after um she messaged me saying hey what's your return policy so you guys you need to understand when you do this business you have your policy for a reason, right? You have everything, all your ducks in a row. You have your return policy, damage policy, all these avenues, cancellation policies. Make sure you have your contracts set in stone before you take any money from clients or why not. So that's what I did. Um, everything was spelled out in my contract. For every business, I take a 50% upfront to reserve the date, 
get the materials and start the design process and that is non-refundable okay for the balance is due one week before your event and i'm going to tell you why um number one if i don't collect that deposit i i could be potentially losing money because if that client ever decides to cancel on me or something happens I already spend money on materials that I'm not going to be able to use or do anything with it. So that's money lost right there. At least if I use that deposit to buy towards material, if they cancel, it wasn't my money. It was money that was spent on materials and that was it. Call it a day. So there's a lot of factors that go into creating your policy for your business for obvious reasons, right? Um, so whatever percentage you want to take that's up to you i take 50 that's just me why don't ask me i just feel like i'm taking the time to um, design your for your party get the materials do all the legwork and i'm actually also taking the spot away from somebody else you know so that that's how it goes for my policy so then literally you guys like maybe three months in after she she actually paid me in full which doesn't matter some people like to pay in full some people like to do the deposit and do that so that's fine too so she paid me in full and she contacts me and asks me like what's my return policy so that right there is like a red flag right like what does she want what's happening so her spiel i'll put it this way was um something happened we may have to um cancel the party overall and um you know a family situation happened so we're trying to figure out what to do so i said oh, i'm sorry to hear that i messaged her back and i said okay um here's my policy and i forwarded the contract mind you that she agreed on where it says 50% deposit non-refundable. But I reiterated, re how do you say? I pretty much re-explained, let's just say that I can't pronounce that word for my life. Um, I explained to her in a, in a DM, you know, my policy is 50% of front not refundable. And then the rest, if you pay in full, either that could go credit towards, an, uh, you know, another event that you have, or I... That's about it when you pay in full. But if you don't pay in full, obviously, you know, she didn't pay me the whole thing. But I went out of my way to say, I could give, like I can give you the other 50% and just let me know who should I send the money to. So she comes back and she says to me, I mean, taking some money for a deposit is fine, but 50% is way too much. Like, you're not going to tell me how to run my business, number one. That was my first thought. Of course, I didn't say that. But, like, who do you think you are? Like, you're not going to tell me how I run my business. I told you from the get-go, like, this is my policy, and you agreed to that. You pay me in full. If you would have had an issue, you would have brought it up right then. But that was not an issue, you know? Back then, at least. So... She comes back telling me, you can take some of the money, but 50% is too much. And I explained to her, I said, 50% not refundable, that secures your date, starts the design process, and I get materials. Plus, that secures your event that I could have serviced somebody else. That's, and I put my foot in my, in, on the ground because that was it. So, I said, please let me know who do you want me to give the rest of the money to. So my understanding is she took a step back probably and thought, oh, holy cow, like it's either 50, I can't, I only get 50 back and I lose that money or I just might as well continue to do it because then she proceeded to tell me, okay, that's fine. Um, we're still good for the party, uh, business as usual. And I said, okay, just let me know if anything happens. And I left off like that. So all of a sudden it became, we're about to cancel the, the party. 
a family situation happened, and now that she find out my policy, we're good. Like, we're just business as usual. <laughs> so I was like, whatever. Now, you guys, fast forward to the day of the event. She checks with me, and I tell her I'm going to be for setup, everything good to go. It was actually just myself and my husband that was helping me. And so he says to me, oh, we got to go to this event um, with the lady that wanted to cancel on you. That's going to be so awkward. And I'm not going to lie. Of course, it's going to be awkward. But I said to my husband, listen, I'm going with this mindset. I'm there to do a job. I'm going to put the best foot forward. And I'm not going to take because at the end of the day, you guys, for all of you guys that are doing business, you're going to encounter a ton of people that you're going to say, like, are you kidding? You got to be kidding me. Did they really ask that? Did they really said that? Did they try to do that to me? Like, and you just got to let it go. You got to accept it. It's just how people are wired to be sometimes. They're going to try to get a sale. They're going to try to low ball. They're going to try to do everything to save on a coin. You know what I mean? So you got to have this mentality that, you know, just put your best foot forward because at the end of the day, it's my name. It's my business. And just because of a petty situation, I'm not going to jeopardize everything that I've worked for so far. So over a stupid comment, you know what I mean? So I said, nope, I'm doing my job. I'm getting in and out and I'm going to try to get my pictures, try to do everything that I can to uh, make it look good, you know, and market the hell out of it. So and that's what I did. So fast forward to that day of setup. I get there on time, by the way. First things I do is I step out of the car, look at the place, look at where everything's going to go. And then I go to my car and start unloading. The place was empty. So I go out, I take my balloons, I tell my husband, okay, let's go. We're getting in. And as soon as I walk in, I see balloons on the floor. Not mine, somebody else's. So I was like, what the heck? Like, what? So I immediately called her, the one that hired me. And I said, blah, 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 her name. I'm like, I'm just a little confused. I said, did you by any chance hire somebody else to do balloons? Or am I in the wrong room? Because that could happen too, you know? Like, and she, not laughing, but kind of like a nervous laugh. She was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She, she, I hire somebody else. And then she goes, they're going to decorate outside of the room and you're going to do the, the front stage, like the stage. Oh, okay. And I, you know, she's like, I'll be there in 15 minutes or whatever. And I'm like, yeah, no problem. When I tell you guys how awkward that was, this is the first time this thing has ever happened to me where I walked into a room where another balloon decorator is there and I'm like, she was really nice. She introduced herself. I went in. I'm like, hi, nice to meet you. I'm Chantal. I'm from Uptown Events. How are you? She told me what her business was. And I said, oh, okay. And then I'm like, all right, well, I'll let you be. And I'll be doing the front stage. And she looked at me and she was like, yeah, no problem. So she was really nice and cool about it. I have a feeling she already knew that I was going to show up. Me? I had no clue, you guys. Uh, it was like somebody dumped a bucket of cold water on me. That That's how I felt. But, you know, sometimes you just got to let it go <laughs> and continue to do what you got paid for. So I walked in. I start un unloading the stuff. Everything is good to go. And then my client shows up with her whole entire family. When I tell you, it was like maybe seven people. That's okay. They're like making the arrangements for like the table centerpieces or why not. I'm doing my business. I'm, I'm not even focusing on what the other person's doing. But a handful of people from her family were right behind me staring at every move I was making. And there's nothing more like obnoxious than a person that's like hovering over you all the time. Oh, you guys, don't even get me started. It's just one of my pet peeves, right? I get it because I am a perfectionist. 
So I get why people sometimes want to or feel the need to tell you what to do, even though it's your job and you got hired to do a certain job. Um, but when I tell you, and I've had this happen many times where people say to me, oh, can you move it a little bit there? Or could you just change that? Or could you do this? And it's like, I ask all my questions, details, everything. Like I have it mapped out by the time I get to the place. All I got asking sometimes is, if I don't know, where is this gonna go? That's it. I already know the shape of the garland, everything I have to do for every setup, you guys. I even do a mock-up of how it's gonna look in my house before, you know, I go for installations. So for people to try to change that, then you start thinking, wait a minute, I didn't get paid for that. I didn't get paid to add more balloons. Like all these things start like spiraling, right? I'm never rude. I'm very professional about it, but it is very obnoxious when people are like hovering over you, you know, unless you're the client that hired me, I don't know why you're there. That's how I feel. So anyway, so there was like seven guys looking at me doing these balloons. And of course, the next thing you guys got to think is I'm there and there's another decorator there and the family's right behind me watching every move I make. Now I have to look like I own this place, like I'm the boss and this is my game because now I feel pressure to put out. I always try my best, you guys, that's just me, to put out my the best display I can. But now it becomes almost like a competition when there's a person right next to me doing balloons as well. I felt like I was in a reality show. One of those shows competitions, like they're staring at you, the judges. I'm telling you, like it was like mind blowing. And I'm just getting so aggravated because just the thought of it is like, but anyway, so I started, I started, you know, doing my garland or why not. And you can tell like, the difference between me and her and it's not to talk bad or talk trash about somebody's job because i don't know what level of training she had i've been there when i don't know how to do certain things you know like i've been in that place before but if you're gonna tell somebody this is what they're paying you to do and you're gonna sell it to them that oh yeah i can do this i can do that girl you better practice what you preach. If you're telling this person that you're going to make a balloon mosaic, mind you, at least for me, takes me two solid days, sometimes even three. It takes me two days to make one letter or one number for a balloon mosaic from the start to the end, meaning I construct the number and then I fill it with balloons. So the family showed up with this like mosaic shell of a number 50 and gave it to her to start uh, filling in the balloon mosaic, right? My jaw dropped to the floor and I kept doing my thing, but you guys, I was so, I just couldn't believe, I looked and I was like, I felt so bad for her. I don't know what she told them that she could do, but that is not a job you do in an hour or a half hour. There's no way on earth you could pull a great job on a mosaic. There's no way, you guys. And you know what? I feel like sometimes you get what you pay for. So anyways, all of this happened, right? And me and my husband, we kind of talked to each other by just looking at each other. And I looked at him and he looked at me and we understood, we understood. They were never gonna cancel this party. They were just trying to cancel me. And that's the reality. They found this girl for a cheaper price, right? And they decided, oh, let's get rid of the other one and use that money towards this new girl that you know is charging us probably a hell of a lot less right and when they realized that they were going to get half of their money back they decided to keep me but continue to hire the other girl because they figure because 
here's the, the funny part. When we were on the beginning talks of this like setup, I sent her pictures of the garlands that I have done and I had shown her balloon mosaics. I charge a decent amount because they take a lot of time to make. So she probably figured you're already charging me a whole arch. If I add those two balloon bouquet, um, mosaics, then it's gonna be even more money. So they rather pay somebody on the cheaper end to get those and have me make the big setup, you know? And that's fine, you guys, to each his own. What I didn't like is like, I kind of careed through the lines like, okay, you were trying to get rid of me and give my job to her and it didn't work out for you. And now this is what you get. You get two decorators that probably in the end, it costed her more, to be honest with you. <laughs> but whatever. At the end of the day, you could tell the difference. And I'm not trying to be mean. I'm really not trying to be mean, you guys, because I've been in that position before where I've promised I could make this for you without having any experience. But you best believe when I did my first balloon mosaic, I did a trial. I practice before the actual event. So the way I do it is I do it at home. It takes me about two days to just get one letter done or one number. And, um, and I bring it all packaged and I just place them and I'm good to go. I don't ever do anything at the place, let alone balloon mosaics. It takes so much time, you guys. Like by the time you use the heat gun, um, you know, all this other stuff, like there's no way. And they did not look good. <laughs> I, could, I could tell you from a mile away that they were not. And I didn't take a picture because I nicely said to her, let me take pictures of my display first because I really don't like to take credit for somebody else's job. But in reality, you guys, it did not look like it, like somebody, it looked like somebody half ass the stuff, you know, like, and I think that they could tell too, like the whole family could tell because my, I spend a lot of money on my balloons because they're high quality balloons and you can tell you guys, I'm going to show you my display that I did for this party right here. The, the theme was the 50th, uh, 50 birthday, right? And I had black balloons. I had black marble balloons. And then I had gold. As you guys know, there's a shortage on gold uh, balloons right now. Good quality. So like, and I'm talking about Jamar, Callison, um, Qualitex, all these like brand balloons there, you can't find them. And if you do find them, like say in Amazon or whatever, they're like an arm and a leg. So a bag that will cost you like say $12.99, they're charging you like almost $34 to $54 a bag on Amazon, which is such a rip off you guys. So I have balloons that I bought and I have some. So I use good quality balloons for my display because Believe it or not, you can tell in a picture when it's a good quality versus cheap balloons, okay? You can tell. You can't just tell me you can't. You can. And I know because I've also used cheap balloons in the past. And let me tell you, there's a difference between garlands I did like a few years back versus what I do now. And the nice quality balloons have this like very, almost like a pale gold. They're chrome. They're very nice and rich and solid instead of that like strong screaming at you yellow, you know, and her balloons didn't even look, they look like you could have gotten it at the dollar store, to be honest with you. They kept popping on her. It was just, it was a hot mess and I felt for her, but I was there to do my own job. And I think at that point, the family kind of saw the difference between me and her. And it could have been the opposite. It could have been that she had so much experience. She was way better than me. You know what I mean? Like, but it's just never, I feel like it's never right. I just made the effort to, to be a good, like, you know, I introduced myself or whatever. And, and that's, that's how it happened. And let me tell you, you can tell, you can tell that they were like, 
they were very like shook about i mean there were more things that happened um that day that i think puts me up there because i helped them long story short there was an issue back and forth and the manager of the place didn't want to move like a stage for them she was being nasty to the family and i stepped up and you know me and my spanish side came out and i fought for them and they got a good deal moving furniture away from the place that was like old and tacky looking you know what i mean like some places you're gonna find that sometimes those people don't care like those managers they don't care even if you pay a ton of money to book the place so i helped the family in that sense and they can tell i was i wasn't just doing balloons i was actually advocating for this family so in the end when i came back and picked up my my um my frame the mom i believe approached me and asked me you know offer me some food told me how great the arrangement was and this and this and that and she was very appreciative and nothing about the cancellation came you know what i mean like came back or anything like that like they were very happy with the job i did um but i think that it speaks for itself you get what you paid for and sometimes when people try to lowball you and stuff, it's your time. I mean, I literally, you guys spend like five hours doing, I wouldn't say doing nothing, but pretty much and waited for five hours to pick up my, my um, circle stand. And that's a lot of time, you guys. Now, luckily I went with my husband. We made it a little date night. We went out to eat in the area. We tried to go to the movies, that didn't work. And we ended up at Walmart. We were like <laughs> walking around, killing those five hours. And would I do that again? Probably not. What I've learned from this experience is, and I do look at this, I do, but this was my first experience actually going that far out, never again. If I go that far I'm only doing balloons and I'm out the door. I'm not going to do rentals. I am not. They can hire people for rentals because that happens too, you guys. There's times where you can just decorate for them. You don't have to bring a flower wall. You don't have to bring a circle or a marquee letter. That's a, you know, those are rentals. And unfortunately, I'm a small business. I can't spend that much time doing what? Luckily, my family is able to help me take care of my children. But if I didn't have them around, which was a little bit of, it was a scare factor there, but that would have costed me a babysitter that I have to pay for. So who's, who's making that payment? You know what I mean? Like those are things that you guys need to think about when you take on jobs that are out of your reach pretty much. In my case, I'm thinking like, if I ever do a job where it's that far, I'm not going to do rentals like the circle or anything like that. I'd rather uh, refer them out to somebody that rents them or have them themselves look within their area, somebody that can rent it. And if they like the balloons, I can come and do the display for them. Uh, so I'm only going to stay local to my town when I have to do rentals because I, I just I can't afford to be doing that again <laughs> and it was a close close call you guys between them pretty much canceling me and hiring this lady and that i can't do anything about it but if something from this experience for you guys just make sure you get all your communication across in your contract when you write your contract state your policy state that you're not responsible for any latex allergies, make sure you're not responsible if something falls, you know what I mean? Like make sure that you say to them, if it's a rental, this is the times I should pick it up. If my rentals get damaged, you have to pay for it. Um, if you pay me 50, 20, 15, whatever percentage for deposit is non-refundable because that will cover your business, you know what I mean? So all these things, iron them, iron them out because and I'm not, I'm not telling you, I'm constantly changing my policy. 
I have this like template of my invoice and my receipts with all of my policies and stuff because, and they keep changing because when something comes up, I'm kind of like, oh, I better put this next time. And all these things. So you're going to continue to change it. There's not black or white situation. It depends on your business. So make sure you get savvy with that because there are going to be people that are going to try to bring you down. They're going to, they can even sue you if they want to, like if they want to. So like, make sure that you think of all these aspects, all these potential things and be ready to say, if I have to get rid of this headache of a person and give all the money back, and you have to cut your losses, fine, let it be, but have the money available. Don't just spend it and think, oh, because you know what? Until that job is done, that money does not belong to you just yet. Remember that. So with that, I hope you guys enjoyed this little blurb about my experience and you know the craziness of balloon business. And it goes for corporates too, you guys. Like just because you're a small balloon business doesn't mean you don't have corporate events. Like I have one coming up soon for a holiday party and they require invoices, itemize everything, make sure all your policies are in a row. And it's also far, but this one, they're hiring their own greenery wall. They have like a green wall and I'm just there to do balloons and call it a day. So you learn from your mistakes, you learn moving forward. And again, thank you so much for watching my channel. Please hit that like, send me your comments if this has ever happened to you, this awkward situation that happened to me because I still can't get over the fact that two decorators were in one place. It's the first time that happens to me. But, um, you know, and don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button below because the more I have, the more subscribers I have, the better for me. <laughs> okay. Bye, guys. See you till the next video.